how do you describe Bitcoin to those of us that are still using regular money? Okay, I would, I would describe Bitcoin as a virtual currency. There's actually a few virtual currencies. Bitcoin currently is the one with the largest kind of market value, around almost uh, nine billion. Um, and it's basically, Bitcoins are created through a process of, of mining, and it's similar to mining, let's say, gold, where you, you actually have to go out and do work to get it, except it's computer power instead of, you know, axes and shovels um, or, you know, tractors and, and, and equipment. Uh, the effort required to do that gets harder and harder each time a Bitcoin is mined. Um, so you actually need to invest in you know, expensive computers to do that. The currency is decentralized, so no government can print more money or change it. It's, it's controlled by a you know, peer to peer network. Um, and that, that's, you know, in essence, the currency. So okay, you, I got I to stop you there because when you went to the peer to peer network, that's, I, I kind of understand what that is because I remember about Napster and the idea being that once something goes out into the internet ether, it can bounce around and you don't know where it's going to end up. But in this case, do you need, in a sense, a key? Do you need something to unlock the Bitcoin? Because correct. You say that there are a limited number of these and that you have to mine them with computer power. What is the thing? Is it a big, long string? of numbers? Um, well, I would look at it, you know, to try to keep it simple. Right. Um, the, the number of Bitcoins can go up to about 21, go, can go to 21 million. Okay. Um, so it'll get mined till that point and it gets harder and harder to make more. Once you have a Bitcoin, you need a key to unlock it so you can kind of pass it on to the next um, user. So that's kind of how they're made. Or you can, you know, the other way you could get a Bitcoin if you didn't mine one is to um, go to an exchange and convert, let's say, U.S. dollars to to bitcoins and you know the, there's been actually a lot of volatility in, in there the market. has because a lot of these exchanges are having problems maintaining Correct. the actual efficacy of the exchange for example what is it uh, mount gox Correct. in japan Correct. They, they had an issue, and I mean, this isn't the first attack that um, you know bitcoins have, have been under. I'm sure there will be. You it's know, just like others. live by technology, die by technology. Correct. At the but same I, time. I, you know, I think as as um, ex exchanges get more established, there'll be some dominant players in the industry, and they'll have best practices to, to make sure that it's secure. So, so where does Bitcoin Shop fit into all of this? So what we do is, you know, our our firm was started by two NASA engineers, and they kind of realized that. Um, you know, it's great to have a currency, but if you can't spend it on anything, what's the point, right? So, you know, bitcoins as a, as a means of speculation is not really what we believe in. We believe if, you know, if you can have a, a currency that can be spent on goods and services, then you can actually do something with it, and it could actually be, you know, convenient. But isn't it already convenient to, let's say, use your credit card or to use some other form of electronic payment? I mean, what is the advantage of going to bit of having, first of all, to acquire these bitcoins and then to go to a specific location on the internet in order to buy products that might be available somewhere else? Well, the, the convenience will, will, be, will be built over time. Um, you know, right now you can. You know, with a digital wallet on your phone, you can just scan a, you know, a QR code and purchase something that way. So you could actually start paying for things with your, with your phone. Because it's a global currency, you could go to another country and buy, let's say, a cup of coffee at a coffee shop, right? As these, as more um, stores and, um, you know, more companies come out and accept Bitcoins, it'll be more widely accepted. So right now, we came out with the idea that you couldn't, there are no products or services you could buy. There are no products you could buy. So we right. basically have over 140,000 products on our website. So if you want to go buy a flat screen TV with bitcoins, you can do that on our website. But is that just a connection of your website to someone else's inventory? Correct. Correct. So we don't want to be in the business of warehousing and logistics. So you're just, in a sense, a broker. And do you take a fee for that? Correct. Okay. If you uh, are correct and if this builds into something, how big is this industry? Oh, that, that's hard to say. I mean, it, it, it could be massive. All right. Um, so if it's massive, you used a, a procedure, a reverse merger, to become a public company. Why did you do that rather than go the more traditional route of an initial public offering or private equity investment? Uh, not private equity, but venture capital. Uh, very simple. Three reasons. I've kind of touched on this with, with, with others as well. One, publicity. Um, we are an e-commerce site. We need to convert potential investors to customers and customers, if, you know, if they want to invest in our company as well. So 
Yeah, the, but couldn't you get that publicity by just having the name Bitcoin in the sure, name of the Sure, but company? would I be sitting here on TV with you tonight and have all these viewers watching? Hopefully someone will go you know, buy something on our website. And we're running a 10% discount this week. So we need that publicity, and it's, you know, it, it's coming for free. So that, as a, as a startup company, is huge. The second is transparency. There's been a lot of skepticism around Bitcoin in general. And to the extent we can, you know, open the hood and let, let people look under and see exactly what we're doing, you know, we believe it'll legit. So what's the volume right now? I mean, you're doing a lot of volume or what are you doing? Um, it's pretty small. So, you know, we're, we're just, we've been in business, um, you know, since June last year and we really only opened the website, um, you know, in the third quarter. So, you know, we are, we are effectively a, you So know, how many, I mean, like, just give, give an example, like what's the quarterly volume, dollar volume and sales or? Uh, we, you know, we haven't disclosed our financials at, the, at this juncture. Um, we, we, you know, as a startup company, we didn't have an audit done that would be PCOB approved. So until we... That's what, hence the reverse merger. Um, no, we did the reverse for publicity, transparency, and, and then the other big one was time to market. The, the, bit, the Bitcoin ecosystem is moving extremely fast, yeah. and if we had done an IPO, it would have taken nine months. Um, you know, we raised two million, almost $2 million. It would have been very challenging to get a banker interested at that level. If we had done a, a venture capital round, it would have been you know, three to four months to get the financing, plus we wouldn't have gotten publicity, uh, and we wouldn't have received, you know, the, we wouldn't have had the transparency for our investor and customer base. All right. Well, so, we'll keep an eye on it. Yeah.